Again, my name is Hernando County Sheriff Al Nienhuis, spelled N-I-E-N-H-U-I-S, and it's pronounced Nienhuis. Uh, we're here out at uh, Cheever Road in uh, Hernando County. Uh, for reference, it's uh, just a little bit north of Yance Road uh, between Cobb Road and Ponce de Leon. It's in a fairly rural area of Hernando County. The, the lots are very large and most of them are very wooded. Uh, there's some uh, farm animals around and so forth. And around almost exactly at noon today, we received a call uh, from this residence advising that uh, JJ, uh, the, their son, was missing. He's about two years old. He has blonde curly hair. And uh, according to the mother, he had been missing for about an hour at the time she called us. Uh, we have done a neighborhood canvas several times, not only talking to neighbors, but also uh, searching homes in the area. And um, we're relatively confident that a witness, a fairly reliable witness as far as we can tell, uh, saw JJ in the front yard playing with the dogs at about 1040 a.m. Um, so we believe that he uh, disappeared somewhere between 1040 and 11 if the mother is accurate at the time she gave us. Um, unfortunately, we haven't been able to locate him. We have well over 50 law enforcement personnel from the Hernando County Sheriff's Office, between 50 and 60 of them out here, uh, doing everything you could possibly imagine to find JJ. We have uh, individuals from the uh, Department of Corrections with their bloodhound. Uh, we have Pasco Sheriff's Office with a bloodhound. We have the Citrus County dive team up here looking at some bodies of water that are very close to the house. Uh, but as of right now, we have no indication uh, that he was abducted or he wandered off. We just don't know what happened. Um, unfortunately, the time delay did not help us any, but uh, we have been scouring the woods with the bloodhounds, with our regular patrol canines, and deputies uh, have been coming back just covered in uh, sand spurs looking uh, for little JJ and calling out for him. We've had to helicopter up with the FLIR and the camera uh, trying to see any indication of him. And uh, unfortunately, we have not been able to um, get any indication at all where he might be. Uh, we have also checked uh, any sexual offender or sexual predator in the area. We have checked them all off the list and every single one of them without exception was cooperative, even let us come in and look in their house and search their house uh, just to rule that out as a possibility. Uh, I can tell you that we're not going to go home until we find JJ. Uh, the family is uh, being very cooperative with us and uh, they know that we're out here working extremely hard to figure out exactly what happened. Uh, as I said, it's a challenge because it's a very wooded area and it's very difficult to see from the helicopter. We're thinking maybe as the um, sun goes down, the uh, uh, forward looking infrared cameras might be able to give us some indication where he might be. And I'm also ta told that uh, some of the bloodhounds might work a little better as the sun starts to go down. So uh, everybody out here, the Hernando County Fire Rescue has been out here helping us. Um, everybody is dedicated to finding a uh, little JJ. Now, I do want to tell the audience out there uh, that if you live anywhere near this location to please check your property. Um, he's a two-year-old, but I, I'm told he's a very, very rambunctious two-year-old, uh, probably uh, acts a little older than he actually is, as you might expect. And uh, so he might have gotten further away than we anticipate, and he might be hiding in someone's shed or their garage. Um, so we would certainly appreciate everybody that's probably within a mile or two at least of this to check their property three or four times to make sure JJ isn't hiding in a car or in a shed or something like that. Also, if you have a family member, again, we don't have any indication he's been abducted, but if you have a family member that's acting strange, uh, we're going to check out every lead that we that comes in until we find JJ. So if anybody's acting weird, uh, please give us a call and let us come talk to him or her and see if we can uh, rule that person out as a possible suspect if, uh, we, God forbid, JJ was abducted. So uh, I'll, I can't answer much questions because we don't have many answers, but I'll be, do my best to answer any questions you might have. 
Uh, there have been some indications. I, I don't want to go into too much detail. They've had some direction, and we've been working really hard in that direction. Uh, of course, in these situations, um, uh, there are a lot of possibilities. That's why we have a lot of different resources here with different uh, abilities. Um, and, um, you know, we hope, obviously hope, uh, that we find him alive and well. That's our, that's our hope. Uh, as of right now, I've been talking to my detectives, and of course, nobody is ruled out as a suspect, but I can tell you that uh, my detectives and I have a couple of my best detectives were interviewing them, and they, at this point in time, we don't have any reason to believe that any family member or any associate of the family uh, appears to have anything to hide at all, and they want to find JJ just as much as we do. That was in his, in his front yard. A neighbor happened to be uh, going by and saw him in the front yard. I think he saw with some of the dogs and, and didn't think anything of it. Um, unfortunately, um, the family didn't notice him missing for quite some time. And then again, another thing that uh, anybody who's ever missing a child, call law enforcement instantly. Uh, don't look for the child for an hour before you call us uh, because uh, obviously the quick, we'd much rather get here and get canceled on the way or have you find the toddler than uh, have an hour lag time. So, uh, but this individual was pretty adamant that he saw the, he knows the young boy, uh, hasn't interacted with him, but he's seen him in the yard before and he didn't think anything of it, but uh, he had the exact time because he went and got gas and had the gas receipt so he was able to tell us exactly when he saw the kid. So. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear. Well, I, I will tell you that, um, again, it makes it difficult for the dogs and that and so forth. But I think if people uh, do want to volunteer, particularly on the outskirts, again, we don't think he got past uh, Yonts Road or Cobb or 98. But we may have people start checking those areas just in case we've been in that uh, block area. It's, it's a lot larger than a city block, but that area bounded by those three, uh, three streets, rather, we've been searching frantically in that area. We think it's very unlikely that a two-year-old could cross any of those major roads without somebody seeing him, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely take that help. Uh, just keep in mind that anybody who comes, we're going to uh, run their background to make sure that they don't have a criminal history and so forth, and then they're welcome to check some of the areas. And uh, again, it's a difficult, it's very, very difficult area to search because he's very small and some of these woods and the trees make it very difficult to see, sometimes even a few feet because the grass is so high. So. Uh, we've been looking into that, and we actually um, are actually looking right now at a, uh, a delivery truck driver that we understand may have uh, delivered a package in the area around that time and may have some uh, camera footage, but I haven't got that confirmed yet. But unfortunately, because uh, the houses are so far apart and set back, um, if there are any with ring cameras, uh, it's not going to show a whole lot. But we're, we, we've been checking and double checking that, but I don't think we've had anything specific come up yet. So. Obviously, it's a race against time. I mean, just how concerned are you as every minute that goes by it makes it tougher to find this? Right. And, and, and again, starting. As I said, and I don't, I don't blame the parents because I'd probably do the exact same thing. I would spend time looking for my kid because I wouldn't want to bother law enforcement. So I'm not, I'm not being critical of them. They're, they're dealing with something that's unimaginable to most of us. But that being said, uh, even that first hour really put us behind. And now, um, every hour that goes by, another five hours so far, uh, it certainly doesn't uh, make us more hopeful. If anything, it's less hopeful. So. Well, I will tell you that um, anybody who has raised small children know that they tend to gravitate towards water. So that is obviously something that we're looking at. Uh, the Citrus County Dive Team is here searching. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to report that they haven't found anything yet because if they find something, it, the, the news is probably going to be pretty grim. Uh, but it's the body of water they're looking at is fairly large. And anybody who's been in this area and seen a pond, it's very difficult to search. It's literally inch by inch. So 
we're probably going to have additional dive teams come in tomorrow and help search that particular pond as well as maybe some other bodies of water in the area that are a little further away. Pretty unlikely that he got that far away, but we're, 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 we're not ruling anything out. We're going to uncover every stone we can until we find him. So. Um, I, what I'm being told, and obviously that isn't our first priority right now, we're trying to find him, but my detectives have been interviewing him to see if they could get any additional information um, from the parents, but it's my understanding that a relative dropped him off about 945 and he was sleeping. Uh, the person, the caregiver was also sleeping. It was, he was apparently put next to that person or whatever, um, and so that's why they know they could only say 945 um, and then didn't call us till noon. But again, somebody apparently saw him in the yard around 1040. And according to the mother, she believes he was uh, discovered missing around 11. So we think we're talking about a 20 minute window, but obviously that's all subject to change as we get more information. So. Do you have special needs or anything? Uh, other than being a toddler, no, not that I know of. Uh, well, you can, uh, they're, they're down by the command post, and as you can imagine, uh, they are um, distraught. Uh, they're upset. They're, 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 they're frustrated like we are. Um, they are um, just holding their breath, and they're, they're, they're uh, I'm sure they're praying hard. All right, I, and the minute we know anything, hopefully we'll know something sooner rather than later, but we're going to be out here for the duration, and we have plans set up for t tonight as well as tomorrow for additional uh, resources to come in, and uh, uh, as anything breaks, we'll, we'll certainly get you more information. But again, if the public could keep their eyes open for him, and uh, if they know of anything strange whatsoever, we even, uh, and it's a little bit, uh, I don't want to say humorous, but we even had somebody from out of state call in claiming to be a psychic and gave us an address and we went and checked it out. Uh, it turned out to be nothing. Fortunately, it was very specific and it turned out to be nothing. But if we'll follow uh, uh, a lead from a, a psychic, we will certainly follow a lead from a family member that says, my family member is acting a little strange and we think that person might be involved. So make sure you give us a call. Thank you all for uh, covering this. We certainly appreciate you getting the word out.